Alright guys, welcome back to another recap. Um, green day today. Yesterday I had a red day. Today's a green day. Um, so I'm going to go over all my trades here. Not all of them. Some of them are pretty scratch trades, so I'm just going to leave those alone. Um, but if this is your first time watching this uh, channel, watching my videos, I do daily recaps every single day. Excuse me. And I also trade live every single morning completely free. You don't have to pay anything to watch me trade live. Right here on YouTube, click the notification bell or go to tradecaster.com, which is a trading platform, and you can see me trade live every single day completely free. Cancel the payment over there. So yesterday I did have a red day. Uh, I was pretty frustrated yesterday. If you guys saw my my recap yesterday, I was kind of getting annoyed of plays not working out. And, you know, I didn't come in today with small share size. You, you can see I still trade at 75,000 shares. So I'm, I'm still up here with this, you know, pushing the share size, taking a little bit bigger size. Uh, but the plays are not working. And since I'm buying the dips on some of these, at least I'm not getting flushed on. At least I'm not getting completely stopped out of them. Or at least I'm not getting completely big red days. Uh, yesterday, unfortunately, I did catch one. But today, you know, I was in on one up 300 almost $400 maybe. And then only made it half of that profit. So I'm going to go over these trades here. Um, if you guys like the recap, if you guys like my recap videos, my live streaming, uh, any questions you guys have, just comment down below. Leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel um, if you like this information. So uh, also, again, Tesla, you know. Tesla, I don't usually trade the large caps. I am a penny stocks day trader. Uh, I've only traded penny stocks for the last, you know, two years of my trading career. And I've done good on them. So I never really traded the large caps. But this market is completely terrible, like slow. Nothing's breaking out. Nothing's holding pivots. Nothing's, you know, buyers aren't stepping in anywhere. Um, yeah, it is earnings season. Maybe that could play into effect. Uh, but also, you know, overall market is down. Today kind of went up and then pulled almost all the way back down or halfway down but you know it's just the conditions we're in uh hopefully things get better but it's it is kind of pushing me to you know trade these large gaps and and find some setups and i saw tesla today scalped it 200 dollars. i was actually up 300 dollars on the on the day on tesla and i just now took a, a loss for 70 bucks so i ended up calling it i was up almost 500 dollars, but i called it there and then netflix netflix i was actually up you know almost 150 dollars on netflix and then i took one bad trade on netflix and kind of wiped it all out back down to negative 40 but you know there was a trade on netflix that somebody called it out i wasn't even planning on looking at netflix but somebody called it out i looked at it and i was like you know if it gets to this pivot here and starts flagging over it you might be looking for a trade and it actually did exactly that i was very surprised so i'll show you guys that anyways i'm gonna go over this one t t s h a i'm gonna call it tasha i don't know why but i just said that all morning long i guess i can go over rev because that was one that i flipped a lot of shares on and couldn't get that thing to go at all um and after that i'll go over the uh the netflix and the tesla so tasha the the number one I don't even know if this was a number one gapper or not, but it was a gapper, and it was probably the one that looked the best. And, you know, look at this thing. It's right under high of pre-market with a nice daily chart, and this thing is just dead in volume. This thing should be, you know, having volume ripping through here, and there's absolutely nothing. So, I don't know what's going on. Like, this right here is not necessarily a, uh, a bad setup, a bad stock, a trashy stock, or whatever it might be. But just a chart, you know, open on the daily, gapper holding lows, uptrending, taking out certain pivots, holding these pivots, and still moving up. High of uh, pre-market 259 there, room to squeeze through there. And look at this volume. It's just absolutely dead. I just cannot believe it. I really haven't seen the market this this slow. Anyways, so my trade on this one was we had a little bit of a small, tiny downtrend here coming off the open uh, pre-market right there. And so we kind of broke out of that downtrend and then started flagging right here. And you can see it on the 5. That was a nice engulfing candle there. And then started flagging. And on this flag, I ended up taking pretty good entry on that candlestick down there. And I think at this point, I jumped in with 5K shares. You know, I'm not. Uh, that's still a good setup. Even if the market is not working, that's still a good setup. And I'm sniping the low. So I took like 5K shares down there. And this thing popped up from 2.2 two all the way up to 2, almost 2.3. Two, so that is... Um, 10 cents with 5k shares 250 300 dollars i swear i was up 300 and something maybe i had more shares on that one but i'm not maybe i had 7500 shares i'm not quite sure i don't remember now let me see uh, but i took that very low ad there um no 5k shares i guess i was up 300 dollars 250 300 and um and unfortunately you know it never opened up it got up to this kind of 
tops up here and wanted to go didn't and then tried it again and then at that point that's kind of like one two three four five six candlesticks at that exact same penny and not breaking out at that point i decided to cut that trade off and i made a little bit of money um and then same thing right so kind of another downtrend adjust my downtrend 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 breaks out of it starts flagging and then this one i did a little bit of a worse job at sniping the bottom I should have taken this ad right here, you know, these kind of ads right there. It's really hard to 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 uh, nail some of those pullbacks, especially with low volume. Some things just wick down, and you don't even see the candle actually pulling down. So it's very impossible. But this one, because I kind of chased it, bought it up here a little higher. So the bottom of this candle, I only jumped in half the shares as, as I did this morning. And um, it looks like I still made money on that trade. So about 228 and sold 230, 230. So I made uh, two, three pennies on that trade, um, and that was it. And then this thing just went sideways. Look at the volume, right? Nothing there. <clears throat> and then popped up here and then the same thing you know it's the same setup the same patterns that I'm looking for this thing pops up and then starts holding now these candlesticks you know the same ones that I was looking at resistance 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 so it started hovering over there this is a play to take these ads and this one honestly I'm just straight up gonna say I missed this one I should have added here and I should have added here and I probably should have held this one a little bit longer so I added the bottom of that candle but looks like I sold I should have re-added there I think at this one I just got distracted I looked at a different stock um, should have added there and then this had a lot of buyers come in here and that's about as clean as of a move you're gonna get you know this right here is what I was looking for it to happen here leg flag leg non-existent leg flag leg flushed on nothing you know i was still able to get out of green trades on this one and this one but if i would have held this one a little bit longer i've taken 5k shares there at 233 popped up to two almost almost 247 ish you know that's 15 cents there uh 15 cents with 5k shares that is what 10 shit is 500 that's that would have been 700 dollars i think yeah, that would have been $700. But I let that one go, and I didn't even trust it because of the whole volume all day long. So you can see I even jumped in smaller share size. I didn't take the full 5K or even 2,500 shares. I just straight up left it. Um, other than that, I mean, still riding up. I don't, I'm not interested in it. I'm not going to trade anymore. As a matter of fact, let me turn this off so I don't accidentally hit some hotkeys. That was that one. REVB, again, frustrating market we're in, right? Frustrating. Puts in a leg, flags, trying to buy the breakout, nice. Gets to 50 cents. Now, this one, 50 cents, I was looking at 50 cents for a long time, you know. Even early on, we uh, missed this flag, but somebody took this flag, and I, from the beginning, we're like, this thing can go up to 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents. And so, this thing pulls down. Uh, I take some ads down here, you know. Maybe this is a nice leg up here, kind of a bigger flag. Nice leg here, and then flags down here, and then gets the rip, which is what this candle is trying to do. But... To me, it seemed like this stock had pretty good support, pretty good buyers. You know, all of this area was buyers. Buyers still stepping in, pulls back down again, buyers, flushes, and then still holds the flush with buyers, and then still climbs back up to 50 cents. And at this point, I was like, you know, we're going to break 50 cents. Uh, this is two times we tried it. Kind of tried it a third, flush. At that point, the stock should fade. But then, you know what? It cans back up. So now people uh, might be looking for that 50 cents a little bit more. And so... This thing pops up, and I kind of chased this somewhere around here, right under 50, uh, 49, 47. I took some ads, um, looking for that 50 cents. And when I was in this trade, this was very weird. This red candle had not broken 50. It was exactly 50, and then it was pulling down. And as it pulled down and the candle was like down here, it creates that animation of a new high. And I was like, the heck? That candle wasn't even up there. Like, how did it break a new high if the candle is way down here? I don't know what happened, but since I saw that and we technically broke 50 cents and just didn't go anywhere, I was like, you know what? I'm out. And so I got out of that trade there and then found this little pullback there, which is where I was able to get the 47 ad way down here on this on this candle. I took that ad there, started popping up. I was able to make some of that money back that I lost on that breakout and then finally flushed, but I was able to get out pretty early. So I got at 47.54, so still above where I bought still money profit on that one. But then it flushed, and that's a pretty heavy flush. After that flush, you can tell buyers aren't really interested anymore, unless you're looking at that pre-market high, which is still kind of holding that 39 cents. But this was another frustrating stock of, of what this market has really been doing. You know, strong uptrend, strong support. Failed breakout, flush, holds it, strong support, 
pushes up again, and then everybody disappears. Everybody's gone. You know, nobody's there. So that was annoying. Netflix. Um, Netflix, I'm going to point this out. So I don't ever look at Netflix. I don't know why. Oh, I, I know why I looked at Netflix. So I don't I don't, I don't, don't necessarily look, look at Netflix at all. But somebody told me, hey, hey uh, what do you think of Netflix today, you know? And I had some time. I think this was before even market opened. So I had some time. And so I was like, you know what? Let me look at it. And I was like, well, you see. Let me look at the five minutes. It's probably going to be a little cleaner. And I was like, yep, yeah, down here. So let's look down here. I was like, well, you see, kind of a flat top across like 278, 79 kind of range down here. So one spike, two spikes, three spikes, right? And then um, and then we kind of went all the way up and then put in a new high, which was 292 at that time, which was right here pre-market. Put in a high of 292. And then it pulled back down again to that 279. So then it was between this range. Uh, and kind of I called it kind of two ranges, right? And so this is what I call a range of boxes. So here's the range, and then the next range is up here. Right, you kind of see that. So bounces between this range, breaks out of this range, gets into another range, you know. And so at this point, I was like, you know what? I see that Netflix, I see the range we're currently in right now, which was this. When market opened, it was right here. So right here. Uh, let me delete this. It was right here, and at this point, I put alerts. I put an alert here to go to the bottom of the range, and I put an alert here to go to the top of the range. And um, I was like, you know, I even draw them right here. I even drew them right here. I was like, if you break to the downside of that range, look for that retest, and then look for the drop. And if you break to the top side of that range, look for that breakout, look for the retest, and then look for the continuation. And you know, I was just watching it. My alert shot up, and by the time I came back and looked at Netflix, it was. Uh, let me see. It was like this, right? So this is the top of that range. And this thing breaks out, pretty good volume, and then pulls back right down to that 292. And I did not adjust this line. This was literally specifically off of this high right here. So literally the top of that candle right there two days ago or a day and a half ago or whatever that was. And so it matched up perfectly today. So this thing broke out of there, held it, held it again. That was the place to add. Honestly, I missed it, but I called it perfectly. I mean, I was really surprised this thing worked to the penny um, on a $200 stock. And uh, that could have been the place to add. But I ended up chasing it, and I got up 100 and something dollars on kind of this move here. Um, right there. Kind of chased it through here. And I got myself up green, $100 and $150 or something like that. And then for some reason, I was like, you know, SPY is ripping at this point still. SPY was going up. Tesla was also still going up because I was watching Tesla. And I was like, you know what? I think Netflix could hit $300. And somebody else on stream also said, you know, this one could probably hit up to $300. And kind of have a pivot here. I think I bought that pivot on the back end again here. Looking for this thing to push up. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So I bought it there. Flushed on me. I averaged down a little bit. And starts coming back up, coming back up. I get myself into a green trade again. I think now I was up on that green trade like 70 bucks. So now it's probably up like 200 200 on that trade here. And I was like, this looks like a bear flag. This looks like a bear flag. And I didn't exit. And then this thing started pulling back. And that's eventually when I ended up stopping out. So I give back all my profit on that one. But, you know, this trade here would have been the one to nail from 292 to 297 and a half, $7 there. Even if you get half of that, 3 4 $5 a share, that would have been crazy. That would have been a good trade. But it, it did exactly what I thought. And so I was pretty amazed at that. And uh, to know, you know, I've never looked at the large caps, but simple support and resistance, simple trend lines on, on large caps is the way to go. You don't need MACD, RSI. Uh, five moving averages, Bollinger Bands, you know, you don't need all that. If you just can find resistance supports, learn price action, you'll understand and make these stocks a lot more simple. Um, and then Tesla. Uh, Tesla, I guess I can show you my trades. I was pretty bullish on Tesla, um, considering we had held those lows on the daily for several, time, several times, 203. And so today, um, well, I scalped it a lot yesterday. Today, I actually didn't scalp it a lot, so I was kind of happy with my result. Made almost $230 on it with uh, with less in and out buying. But my first ad on Tesla, I was pretty bullish on this one, and so it started popping up, and to me, it looked like a perfect bull flag. I mean, when I looked at this, I was like, that looks good. And I took the ad. It even looked like a five-minute flag. I was like, look, you're literally getting more five-minute flag follow-throughs on the large caps than the small penny stocks. Uh, so this thing puts in that nice like pulls down on the five minute creates a five minute candle down to view up below volume 
and then boom rips and this was my mistake i mean i took that trade right there with 200 shares i could have taken a little bit more aggressively i'm still not used to trading tests on the first five ten minutes i think this might be the first day i trade in the first five ten minutes but i nailed that flag and off of this trade i got myself up i think over uh, slightly over 100 bucks on this name uh on the ticker and so that was a good trade but i mean if i would just hold a little bit 50 shares you know i'm not gonna hold the whole 200 the whole way that's impossible but if i would have just held on a little bit longer i probably would have sold through here wouldn't have caught all this that's impossible you can never do that as a day trader say oh if i would have held i would have made 50k yeah you're right if you would have held you made 50k but 90 percent of the ones if you would have held you'd have been down all your money you know but oh well uh chased it again and then somewhere up here i actually went almost fully red on on the ticker um somewhere through here I, I completely flipped to break even on the stock. So I had given back my $100, $150 on the day. And that happens. I've, I've realized that that happens a lot to me on Tesla. Um, I'm scalping this thing. You know, at the end of the day, I'm green. This is the fourth day in a row that I trade Tesla. And it's the fourth day in a row that I'm green on Tesla. So first day I was I made 160 on Tesla. Second day 150. Third day 270. And today against 200. So I'm up like seven eight hundred dollars on Tesla in four days, which is great. Um, but I do flip and I go from red to green a lot. So I need to, to to slow it down and just find the good setups and take those aggressively uh, and find the bigger move. Like right here, this this nice little push up, nice little flag on our high days. If I would have taken these trades here, I would have written that one down. Now the best trade that I had on Tesla was, you know, draw the biggest trend line on the day. And this is what I say to everybody, you know, on any stock, what is the biggest trend line on the day? Right here, right? Tesla's following this uptrend, uptrend, bounce, 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 bounce. Bounce, bounce, getting tight. At this point, I was like, Tesla's up too much. I got some daily resistances up here. Um, I think it's time for Tesla to pull back. And I shorted this one up here, the top of that red candle, perfectly. Um, and I rode this move down here. Some of these moves, I didn't get a lot of shares in. So if you're like, dude, if you rolled that whole thing, how come you didn't make so much? Because I think I, I got up most of it, and then I didn't ride it all the way down. But that was a nice ad, and no, I'm not lying that I literally top tick that candle right there. There it is, top tick that short there, fully covered. Tried it again, covered into that trend line, and then boom, cracks that trend line. Now, at this one, I didn't want to chase it. I was kind of looking for a retest here and then fail. But I saw this, um, this previous support right here. You know, I don't need moving averages to, to see what's happening right here. I see this, right? Where we got stuck, we got stuck, we got stuck, we got stuck, we got stuck. Finally, boom, explodes. And then now it's like flushing, flushing. Kind of bounced there a little bit and then flushed under it and then drops pretty heavy down. And then this thing bounces right back up. All the way up exactly to that to that same zone, right? To the same horizontal line right here. And this right here was the best trade that I had probably all day long. I didn't jump big share size, but look at this short right there. 222.65. The top of this candle is 222.70. 70 or 71. Within 5 cents. Uh, 5 cents off a stock that's moving a lot. That's crazy. Look, I only jumped in with 100 shares. That was a play to, you know, completely step it up. I should have shorted 300, 400, 500. Oh, well. But the good thing about this trade is that I held on to a lot of this. You know, I shorted it here at 222. I covered 222.40, so 20 cents a profit. 221.20, uh, over a dollar a share. 227, two dollars a share. Um, and then even down here to 221.02. And I think I was fully out there because I think these were reversals. This one I was trying to buy the dip now, which this is the trade that I got burned on right here. Uh, I think I bought here at the low of these candles here, and then I got flushed on there. So that's the trade that I lost 70 bucks. And then I think at that point I was like down like or up $399 on the date. So literally needed a dollar to go over 400 and so that's when I took this tiny little scalp here from there to there, and I made like 10 bucks on that trade there. But uh, this short right here was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and that's, you know, even if I'm trading the large caps, yeah, I can scalp this thing. But if I find a trade like that that just looks crystal clear and I'm, it's like calling my name, you know, not calling my name, but just calling me, you know, like look at that clear zone, breaks out of it, pulls back down, tucks under that zone. That was a place to go. And it was already on the back side of the stock, even more uh, confirmation to go short. Um, so 
even though I didn't make that much on that trade, uh, that was very nice to catch. But anyways, you know, Tesla 4 for 4, it's helping me out. So I'm going to keep watching it, keep looking at the dailies. A um, couple of these other trades, completely scratch trades. Weber, negative 4. BBBY, positive $10. SPY, $2 profit, you know. Um, and that's really much it. I traded a lot of tickers today, but, you know, coming out with $400 on in the green. Yesterday, I did lose 570 so I am red on the week. But, uh, you know, my my recent data does not look bad still. You know, this is just a little bit of sideways action. I got the nice, strong move, really consistent. That unfortunate loss there that kind of threw me off. Slow market, going sideways, a little bit of profit, looking good. Still up over 8.2K. So, you know, I'm happy with these results for now. Uh, hopefully the market does turn around, but uh, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. If you like this recap, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, and come watch me trade live tomorrow. You guys have a good rest of your day.